Okay, part two. If you're seeing this first and you didn't see part one, go watch part one before you're watching part two. Makes sense. All right, so now we're on that one verse. It's talking about that one condition where the man sleeps with a woman who is promised to another person. It's like, now a lot of people are like, oh, this is a case that the Bible says it's okay to rape someone because the guy gets off scot-free. <sighs> you guys are such noobs. Okay, first off, let's take a look closely at the, the context of the verse. Okay, so first off, um, who is a slave girl promised to another man, but has not been ransomed or given her freedom. Okay, so there's a lot of things that are putting in here. First off, she's promised to another man, so she is not able to go with someone else, alrighty? But the point in here is that, that has not been ransomed or given her freedom. Now, if someone did want to marry someone who was promised someone else, they'd have to ransom them. Uh, if it was a slave girl and then belonged to someone, um, then you need to either make conversation, say, hey, you know, I wish to marry this girl. You know, I wish to buy her from you, so we'll give her freedom so I can marry her. So, and that's saying, if that's not the case, that they did not do that. So, it's already taking more of the line of that the guy likes her, maybe she likes him back, um, but they didn't couldn't make the arrangements to get the ransom to get her freedom etc etc i don't think this is the case for rape next it says um the man who or yet they are not put to death because she had not been freed so they can't really kill her because she's gonna be marrying someone else you know so and it's also very a, a fair eye for an eye at the moment society so if she's not gonna die because she belongs to someone else you know it's kind of like if someone you know, puts a dent in your car or something. I'm not sure where a good example would be. But you kind of get the idea, you know, it's not, it's up to the person who is going to be marrying her that, you know, belongs to, it, you know, and he probably doesn't say, you know, I'm going to be marrying this girl. I don't want her put to death. You know, she's still mine, you know, type of thing. Um, so if she's not put to death because she has not been freed, then fairly he should not be put to death either. But he does need to make restitution and needs to make a guilt and sin offering to make justification for that. Or not justification, but to make restitution. So I really, really, really don't think this is a case that if a guy rapes a girl who is a slave, that he gets away scot-free. It just doesn't make sense. Especially with all the very severity of the other sexual laws in terms of adultery and stuff. That guy, if he rapes someone, most likely is going to be put to death. Yeah, I would say that'd be a pretty good estimation of the actual due cause. This, I think, is going to be a lot more the case where that was a mutual agreement, but they can't do that punishment because she belongs to someone, and to be fair, then he shouldn't receive the death either. Instead, they just scourge, you know, giving a good whip, whip or beating uh, as a punishment, and then, of course, the guilt offering. Now, he has to pay the guilt offering, um, and it doesn't mention about her guilt offering, probably because she, if she's a slave, then she does not have property, and therefore cannot make the, the guilt offering. So he may have made, had to make an offering for both of them, um, or whatnot. And I'll probably make a video. If you want me, just tell me. I'll make a video explaining. I think I already did, though, the Old Testament and the um, what the slavery laws were for back then and why there was slavery in the Old Testament and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't in terms of that you're born into a slave. You either um, you know, you got into debt and uh, you couldn't pay off the debt, so you were during slave. And usually it was a temporary thing. There was only a number of years that you were a slave to you paid things off. Or, you know, sometimes they did use their daughters as bargaining chips, sadly. But anyways, that's not new to just Christian, or just the religious times of the practice, you know, the whole back then. Anyways, okay, moving onward. So that kind of explains that one a little bit. Not really case of rape, more the other case. Um, another one that's talking about, just like, uh, for instance, uh, three years for bin fruit. Uh, it says you plant uh, fruit in a new field. Do not harvest for three years, that's forbidden. Uh, the fourth year, sacrifice it all to the Lord. And the fifth year, then you can eat. But it says in there, and i got to refine the verse because I just made little notes for myself. Um, here we go. It says, but in the fifth year, you may eat its fruits. In this way, your harvest will be increased. So it's probably right there saying that if you leave it alone for three years, in the fourth year, um, put the first one to the Lord, it's going to be a more bountiful harvest for the rest of the year so i'm not sure how much of the science is going to be behind that but i'm guessing there might be something to do with that if it the first year that it can bear fruit if you start stripping it it may be you know taking more than it can give or something like that not sure i haven't really tested it don't have the time to test it 
but it's there to help them out so they have good fruit. Uh, do not cut the hair at the sides or clip the edges of your beard. Uh, this is not that God's against haircuts. With this one right here is that there's a lot of um, cultures as well that also um, honor the gods, uh, the, uh, the pagan gods, with their hairstyles. They would carve symbols into their hair. They would shave it all off or, or put in different styles and stuff like that. Um, and God, that's why I said do not clip the, you know, the edges of your sides or whatnot. Do not you know, make your hair kind of like the other people. You can kind of think it of as like, Nowadays, people who put like their hair in like mohawks and spikes, although they're not doing it to a second guy, but it's it's something also to stand out, and it's kind of a, sometimes it can be a prideful thing, not always. So, but yeah, so that's why that's there not to cut the sides, is because a lot of people were using it as an act of worship to pagan gods to cut their hair in certain ways. Um, it talks about tattoos. Do not get tattoos. Obvious reasons um, is going to be that you could run a risk of infection. They didn't exactly have antibiotics back then. As well as you were kind of modifying the body that God gave you. In essence, could be saying that, you know, it's not as cool of a body as you'd want or something like that. So, you know. Um, some obvious ones, like uh, don't turn your daughters into prostitutes. Enough said there. Uh, pretty obvious. Um, so don't say that God doesn't like women and daughters stuff like that because he's hey, you, you take care. You don't turn her into a prostitute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also mentioned about how to respect your elderlies. This is cool. I like this one. We, I think as Americans, we really need to take this one to heart. Um, let me find the exact verse so I can read it out of there. Um, it says, when an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Um, I think that's a cool one because a lot of times Americans are, you know, especially when it comes to like um, people who come over from Mexico or other places, they're all, you know, treating them badly. God here is saying that, hey, you were aliens once too. You know, you were, it's, even for Americans, we were, you know, aliens to America before, when we came over from Britain. Um, it's saying to treat them as your brother with love. So I think that's a cool one as well. So people always talk about the bad stuff in Leviticus, but they never mention the cool stuff. Um, and now the, the other one that is kind of confusing, um, of course, it also mentions that do not sacrifice your children. That's a very bad thing. Again, the reason why, because people are actually sacrificing their children as an act of, to God, which is not good. No, never good to sacrifice your kids. Try not to do it. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, now this one, the one that my buddy had a problem with, he said um, in here... That if anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father or mother. His blood is his, er, uh, er, is on his own head. Now that uh, the word that they use for the curse is not like you know shut the f up or you know stuff like that. It's talking about a very deep resentment curse, like I want you to die curse type of thing. So it's not a light thing that if you just like you know disobey your parents, you, know, you should be put to death or whatnot. But it's very more along the lines of that if you wish that your parents were dead, your life is <laughs> your life is on your own. And it's both uh, just because you know you need to respect your parents on them, but also as a double meaning that you do not do that to God, your heavenly Father. You do not do that to your your um, parents on earth as well. Even if they're bad parents, you still love them. You don't always follow what they say if it goes um, against the Bible. But you do need to love and show God's love to your parents as well as everyone God calls us to. Um, so again, kind of wrapping up, there's some more stuff about the rules for the priest as it goes through. Um, it also goes a lot about celebration, how to celebrate. Because, you know, you do like to have a good time and to celebrate in the Lord um, and to worship and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of in there, but you got to understand a couple basic things uh, to kind of sum it up. One, there's a lot of cultures around them that were doing a lot of bad things, um, and God wanted to set his people apart from there because those things will lead to destruction. Secondly, the Israelites had a very high value on life. So if you made a threat, if, if you did something that could end up with you dying, they wouldn't do it, or they'd be really stupid if they did. Um, so that's why you ever tell your kid the threat, you know, I'm going to ground you for a year if you do this, same principle. Um, but really, if you take a look at it, still God's love shows through. He had a lot of patience with them. I got to wrap this up because 10 minutes up. Take care. God bless. Any questions, just ask me. Bye.